Hey everybody, the Retwirl here, and welcome back to more of Phoenix Ray Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Okay, let's get started with episode 4, Turnabout Beginnings. Almost pressed the wrong button then. <laughs> oh god, I'm looking forward to this. The girl. Let her go! Oh, whoa. What the heck? Holy white dots. Shut up! Come closer, and I kill her. Oh, it's a hostage situation. Lovely. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Oh dear. Wow. Oh. Is that Phoenix? I'm reading through the file of the of an old court case. It was the first case of my longtime mentor, Mia Fey. Fugitive data. Whoa. Terry Falls. Charge kidnapping murder. Sentence death penalty. Fugitive movements. After escaping, Falls met with and then murdered Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Recaptured on Eagle Mountain af about eight hours after his escape. Her very first client was a death row inmate who had recently broken out of prison. That was a whole year before Mia and I ever met. Hmm. Hey, we're playing as Mia again! First trial! Alright, February 16th. We have no idea what the year is, but I'll go for it. <laughs> Ugh, I'm so nervous, I feel like I'm gonna die. I never should have accepted this case. Oh dear! Okay. <laughs> ah! Good morning! Don't be so jumpy, Mia. I didn't do nothing, I swear, I didn't kill nobody. Terry Falls, my first client. Sentenced to death five years ago, and now, a prison escapee. Just relax me, I make small talk and try to relax him. Um, so why did you escape anyway? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh my god. I didn't do nothing, I didn't kill nobody. I never, never lie. I didn't escape from nowhere. Um, but Mr. Falls, the police just recaptured you two days ago. Ugh. Sorry, I told a little lie. Oh boy. But anyway, I didn't do it. I never killed nobody. Sorry for asking, but you're on death row, right? I'm really, really sorry. They sent me to die five years ago, but it was tricked, I tell you. That woman, she lied in her testimony. That's why I got the death penalty. I swear it, I didn't kill her. I could never do that. Hmm. Two days ago, he escaped from the police wagon when it crashed. Then about eight hours later, a policewoman was murdered before the police could recapture him. The police believe that Terry Falls did it. Um, after you escaped, did you meet a policewoman? Yeah, I did. She's the reason I escaped. So that much is true, he did meet with the victim. But I didn't kill her. She was alive when I left. She was alive. It's true. I can trust him, right? I mean, I should. Huh. Whoa! Woo. Woo. Huh? You're not gonna- wait, you're not- I'm like, completely thrown off by this guy. You're not going to figure out the truth by just staring at the guy. You are- uh, why are you here? I came to see how our little kitten was doing all alone in the big scary lion's den. I thought maybe... you'd like someone to play with. Oh my god. It's so obvious. Uh, where is Mr. Grossberg? Huh. That old man is probably still in bed. I bet he's clutching an empty bottle and mumbling in his sleep. Aren't I good enough? After all, it's me, Diego Armando. I didn't say... 
So, Diego. The f oh, Diego Armando, the finest attorney at Grossberg Law Offices, is here for me? No, no, no. You got it all wrong. Today, you're the finest. After all, it took an amazing amount of guts to take this case. Imagine, an escaped death row convict for a first client. Yeah, thanks. I sure wish I could get out of it, though. Relax. I just heard some good news. The prosecutor for today is fresh out of his diapers as well. Really? However, well, like a certain somebody who I won't mention, he's earned the reputation as a genius since beginning his law career. Genius. Well, it's about time to head in, kitten. Sharp on those claws of yours. It's go time. Oh, man. Awesome. A solitary confinement cell for the condemned must be the world's loneliest place. Okay, I'm being called from an unknown number. No, do not remind me. Just silence my phone, you fool. And that's what my client ran away from. Every other lawyer gave up on him, but not me. When I saw those overflowing eyes and heard that simple childlike voice, I just had the feeling that he was telling the truth. Hmm. Alright. So the trial begins. February 16th. Oh, man. Oh, no. What the? Whoa. Oh, it's weird not seeing the usual judge. Maybe that is him. He's just a lot younger. They look so weird with the beard like that. Either way, court is now in session for the trial of Terry Falls. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. That's Edgeworth. Oh, man. He looks slick. I understand the lawyers for both sides are newcomers. Y yes, Your Honor. I'm Mia Fey. Miles Edgeworth, Your Honor. So you're the new prosecutor everyone is talking about, eh? They say you joined the prosecutor's office at quite an early age. At 20, Your Honor. I guess our little kitten hasn't earned herself much of a reputation yet, huh? So he also really likes coffee. Hmm. Come on, Mia, you can't lose... Not to someone younger than you. Hmm. Young people running a trial. I'm not too sure how I feel about that. Now then, the defendant in this case is currently a felon on death row. Two days ago, he escaped from a police wagon. Is that correct? Precisely. But the defendant is not on trial for escaping prison. On the day that the defendant escaped, a policewoman was murdered. So we're here to determine if Mr. Falls was responsible for her death. You got it, kitten. Well then, Mr. Edgeworth, let's hear your opening statement. Yes, Your Honor. It was five years ago. The defendant, Terry Falls, was sentenced to death in this very court. His crimes were kidnapping, extortion, and murder. The girl he threw off the bridge was only 14 years old. A truly horrible crime. I remember it well. There was no decisive evidence, so the trial was long and protracted. Correct. But in the end, what finally decided the case was a certain witness's testimony. Oh my god, I've just realised. He's He changes entirely when he meets Phoenix. No, because the way he acts at the moment is very Manfred von Karma-esque. Yeah, it's really weird. A witness's testimony. The testimony of Detective Valerie Hawthorne. The person who com confronted this criminal. She arrested Mr. Falls at the scene and later testified against him. She said she witnessed Mr. Falls throw his young victim into the river. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. So Miss Hawthorne's testimony was the one that put him away. I'm still thrown off at the fact her surname is Hawthorne. That policewoman you just mentioned, that wouldn't be... Exactly. The victim. The same woman that was killed two days ago. Police Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne. Aha! I see. The man who was sentenced to death based on her testimony escaped two days ago. With only one thing on his mind, to take revenge against the woman who convi convicted him. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Yes, yes. I'm ready to give my verdict. 
Oh, it's quite obvious that the defendant is guilty. Yeah, man. Wait a minute, that's not right. At least hear the case before you decide on the outcome, Your Honor. Watch yourself, Miss Faye. I'm not sure I care for your word choice or your tone of voice. Yeah, that's, that is Von Karma. Oh my god, that's so weird. Young people these days simply don't know how to respect their elders. Why you? You're even younger than me, you hypocrite. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, please call your first witness. I call the detective who was in charge of the initial investigation of this case. Wonder who it could be? Oh my god, he's got a different coloured goat! Witness, state your name and occupation. Wait, so Gumshoe, Dick Gumshoe. I'm the homicide detective in charge of this case, sir. I finally got promoted to the detective division half a year ago. I don't believe anyone asked you about that. Hey man, you got any idea how much work it takes? What is it? You... You're really gorgeous. <laughs> Excuse me? No, seriously. My heart, it's aching for you. Detective, pull yourself together. <laughs> and try to be professional, otherwise. I'll write you up on contempt so quick that something other than your heart will ache. Ooh. Okay, I got it. My god. Relentless. Now, Detective, tell us about the incident. Yes, sir, right away. The victim was Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, a veteran on the police force. She was stabbed in the back with a knife and died from excessive blood loss. That much is already stated in the autopsy report. The court would like to hear more details about the incident itself. So, yes, sir, I gotcha. Okay, let's take a look at this aerial map of the area here. Whoa, what the? This is a sketch of Dusky Bridge, an old suspension bridge. And the river that runs under there is Eagle River. The victim and the defendant met there, on top of the bridge. After stabbing her in the back, the killer carried the victim back to his car. He was recaptured at a police checkpoint as he was trying to make his getaway, sir. Huh. Hmm, I see. Dusky Bridge map. Was, was the victim's blood found on the bridge? The victim, Sergeant Valerie Hawthorne, was wearing a thick coat, sir. Unfortunately, no traces of blood were found on the bridge. Hmm. Mr. Edgeworth, I warn you that I absolutely despise conjecture. If there was no blood on the bridge, then you have no proof that they even met there. Your Honour. Okay, that's totally Edgeworth. If you would listen to the testimony we have prepared, I'm sure you'll be convinced. The two of them most certainly did meet on the bridge that day. <laughs> Why, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm not sure I like you. Wagging your finger at me. <laughs> As though I was some hoser. Detective, proceed with your testimony. Uh, yes sir. Here we go, Mia. Hang on. Okay now, listen carefully, kitten. One little mistake and this guy will drink you for morning tea. Trust me and get ready. Hey! Right, summary of the incident. On the day of the incident, an unknown person phoned the sergeant and asked to meet. Sergeant Hawthorne went to Dusky, Br Dusky Bridge at the d designated time and met with Mr. Falls. And that's where she was brutally murdered, sir. The criminal stuffed her body into his car trunk and tried to make a getaway. Mr. Falls was arrested at a police checkpoint we set up at the base of the mountain. Oh. Ba -da -da -da. Well, you certainly have established the importance of the bridge. Naturally. Now, would the defence please hurry up and proceed with the cross-examination? Yes, Your Honour. Cross-examination coming right up. Hey, hey, settle down there, kitten. If you keep trembling like that, you're gonna make me spill my coffee. I'm not trembling. It's just cold in here. The courtroom can be a cold battlefield, all right. Especially for a beginner. I don't need you to worry about me. I mean... I mean the defendant. The witness. Everyone's a beginner in here. Huh. You got me there. But maybe you should keep your claws out and show them what you've got, kitten. Oh my god. It's okay, Mia. Stay calm. Just remember those court procedures... Oh, court procedure videos you stayed up all night... All last night watching. Yeah. Put what you watched into practice. God, it's weird seeing young Edgeworth. He didn't really look that different, to be honest. 
Okay. This unknown person. You have no idea who it might be, right? Sorry, but I'm afraid I do. What? The one who called Sergeant Hawthorne was the defendant, Terry Falls. What? The defendant? The defendant called her? Sergeant Hawthorne was a very thorough person, sir. She left a note about her phone call with Mr. Falls. A note? Yeah, top secret memo that she left on a desk. Okay. Hmm. According to this note, it seems the one who called her to the bridge was indeed the defendant, Terry Falls. Whose bright idea was it to keep that note from me? Looks like the judge is even more sure of his verdict now. Listen up, never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. It's that detective's fault. He's the one that said unknown person. Hey now, don't make that face at me. I just said it that way because the prosecutor told me to. Was that a trap? With that cute face, I didn't expect him to be so sneaky. Hmm. Wow. Wait, so what did the... Hold up. What's it say? Wait, what? Wait, what? So February 14th, 121, falls 4.30pm at that bridge, wear white scarf for identification. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. This time, the whole truth must come out. No. Interesting. Okay, so don't ask anything I ar don't already know the answer to. That sounds stupid, though. No, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was brutally murdered. <laughs> How do you know this? Do you have proof? Evidence is everything in the courtroom. Mr. False had a car then. Well, that bridge is way up in the mountains, ma'am. The defendant and the victim both went up there by car. I mean, how else, right? What? You mean the defendant drove his own car? No, no, of course not. It was stolen. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Hmm. Car thieves? I'm not sure how I feel about car thieves. Is this guy sure about how he feels about anything? This is a photo of the stolen car's trunk. Oh dear. Naturally, that's the body of Valerie Hawthorne in there. Whoa, that... That doesn't look too comfortable. I mean, she is dead. Yeah. So, the victim... She was stabbed in the back, correct? Yeah. For some reason, men always seem to get stabbed in the back. We're talking about a woman here. You can't tell from this photo, but the knife was stuck in her back nice and firm. Wait a minute. White scarf. Where be the scarf? Man. Ooh, good. Where can I plop that up? Ba-da. Alright. Nice and firm. Hang on, I need to... Keep getting called by the same number, so be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I got a call for from someone wanting me to record something on Sky, so <laughs> I just had to quickly go down and do that. Wait, so what the hell? What just happened? We got the, the crime scene photo. So the condition of the body when it was discovered is very important information. Detective, was there anything strange or noteworthy in the trunk of the car? Yes. Here's a photo of the trunk, but I don't see anything strange, do you? <laughs> anyway, I do. Huh. I just need to remember that I had a, like, two minute break. For one, to edit it out later. And also, um... Oh god, hiccups. But no, it's mostly just so I can remember to edit it out. And also, yeah. To kind of, like, give me a couple more minutes when it comes to ending a session. Witness! You just told a lie. What is it? Do you have something to say, Miss Faye? I'm sorry, I totally forgot what I was going to say. This... This is... This is the first time I've ever had to actually address someone like that. You should have practiced before coming to court. Honestly, Miss Faye, I'm not sure I like this. Hmm. Say there, little kitten. Want a piece of my coffee candy? Candy? Well, you're still too young to be drinking real coffee. Come on, Mia, shake it off. You're a lawyer. Oh, detective. Yes, ma'am. This photo. You said that there was nothing peculiar about it, is that correct? Yeah, that's what I said. Well then, I suggest you take another look at the note written by the victim. The n n note It's very it very clearly says wear white scarf for identification. The caller must have forgotten what the victim looked like, thus this special request. Ah, I um I have one very simple question for you, detective. Where is the white scarf? I can't seem to find it in this photo. Um, well, to be honest, we didn't find it in the trunk, ma'am. And you stopped there? You should have looked for it. <laughs> ah! The caller told her to wear it to identify herself. So I'd expect she just did. No, she did just that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do you have to say about this? Ah. They've totally got the scarf. I see the defense is a little lacking. <laughs> what? The scarf you are searching so desperately for. <sighs> is it this one, perchance? Son of a bit. That does not look white. That looks blue. Like a very, very light blue. But whatever. Where did you find that, sir? On Dusky Bridge. I was there first and decided to conduct my own investigation. W why? Why didn't you tell me? I made a decision to keep all pieces of evidence in my personal satchel. It's the safest place I know. Hmm. <laughs> that hotshot sure has a flair for the dramatic. It's not exactly white as the caller requested. But as you can see, it's close enough for what it was intended for. It looks like it spent some time in the mud. Ah, uh, that's blood. Oh, that's not blood. Really? It looks like blood. Not surprising it was drizzling on the mountain that day. Prosecutor Regworth, he was intentionally hiding that scarf the whole time. I'm gonna say, I can't really hold it against him. Phoenix does that quite a lot as well. So, uh, you know. The court will accept the scarf into evidence. Hooray! Woohoo! Making progress. <laughs> Alright, scarf added. Now, if the attorney for the defence is finished embarrassing herself, I'd like to move on with the testimony. That is alright with you, isn't it, Miss Faye? Why would I like to wrap this scarf around his smarmy little neck? Very good. Now, if we're done with this mud-covered scarf business, the prosecution moves to establish conclusively, and with hard evidence, that Miss Hawthorne and Miss Falls did indeed meet on that bridge that day. Further, we will show exactly what happened there. That sounds quite promising. I can't wait to hear all about it. Everything is moving at his whim. Don't forget, kitten. 
There's a reason why everyone considers this kid a genius. A genius, huh? Yeah. Now, so we're on to a new testimony. Yay! Events on Dusky Ridge. Actually, there's an eyewitness who was there when the incident took place. This photo was accidentally taken by the witness. It shows her wearing the scarf, sir. It was drizzling that day, unfortunately, it's a little hard to see what is going on. Anyway, the criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. That must have been when the scarf fell off. Really? Hmm, looking at this photo... Wait, how do you shove her down from behind if she's in front of him? You can't stab someone, or you can stab someone in the back if they're in front of you, facing you, but... I... Uh, it would be more likely that she would get stabbed in the front. You really get the sense that this bridge is very high up. It is about a 40 feet drop from the bridge to the Eagle River down below. Mr. Edgeworth, who took this photo anyway? Let's just say that it was a well-intentioned third party. A potential witness. So why isn't this person in the courtroom? Well, they said they was... They absolutely did not want to testify. The person in question is very delicate, Your, on Your Honor. <clears throat> Besides, as long as we have this photo, we see no reason to compel her testify. To testify. I'm not sure how I feel about that. The witness's photo! So, as you can see, Terry Falls had both the motive and the opportunity. I think it's quite clear at this point what happened on that bridge. Hmm. Aha! The truth is becoming clear to me now. Huh? Dunk! Yes, it's quite obvious. He's clearly guilty. Not again. That's not fair. I haven't even done my cross-examination yet. Hmm. What do you mean? Hmm. Asshole. And I went to talk Although I don't know what the hell I'd be able to present to counter that. Shoved her down from behind and stabbed her in the back. He was in front of her. <laughs> You can't shove someone down from behind if they're in front of you. This, maybe? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, it could be this. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I, the only thing I'm... Because I saw that, and it's covered in mud. Why isn't her coat and everything covered in mud? If she was shoved down from behind, her front would have been what hit the bridge, which would have got covered in mud. Uh, well, it should have. I think that's my only idea. I guess I did it. Usually if the music goes off when you object, it means you did a good. <laughs> you got it right. So at the time of the crime, there was a light drizzle coming down, correct? That is correct. Yeah, and fog too, so uh, just a generally soggy atmosphere. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I forgot she does like the hair flip. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. Well, I have evidence that doesn't go with the soggy atmosphere. But this is a photo of the victim's body that was found in the, in the car trunk. Considering the conditions at the scene of the crime, something isn't right. By all means, please enlighten us as to what isn't right. What is it about this photo of the trunk that doesn't fit with the conditions that day? This, obviously, just any part of the coat. Yeah. Her stomach. Naturally, the answer is right here. The victim's coat? As far as I can see, there is nothing strange about it. That's exactly what's strange. Remember the testimony. What were the conditions on the bridge that day? It was drizzling and foggy. Dusky Bridge was all wet. If the victim really had fallen down on her stomach and on top of the bridge, then the front of her coat should have been covered in mud. Or at the very least, wet and dirty. That, that's exactly right. The other day I fell on a muddy street and my gorgeous playoff... 
playoff beard was befouled. Oh, that's a familiar sound. I do admit that the crime scene was quite wet that day. However, that doesn't mean that the top of the bridge itself was muddy. If your honour had fallen in the shower instead of on a muddy street, his glorious hockey beard, pride of the legal league, would be wet but not muddy. What? Fortunately, I have yet to test that. Still, your point is well taken. Can you prove that the surface of the bridge was muddy that day? The surface of the bridge? Huh, I can, yeah, the scarf. A real man wouldn't stand for a tart like this. Neither would a real woman. Hey! Of course I can. <gasps> Here is the evidence that proves the scarf of... Uh, the surf the scarf of the bridge. I've just got the scarf on the brain. Surface of the bridge was muddy. This is where they turn around and say, But that's not mud, that's blood! Alright. The evidence is this, this scarf. It should be obvious. If the scarf fell onto the bridge and got this muddy, it means that the bridge was obviously covered in mud. Oh! No, I can't be outwitted by this novice bimbo. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Same to you, buddy. I never expected to hear the word, well, see the word bimbo. Haha. <laughs> uh, Miss Faye's assertion makes perfect sense to me. Objection! I do admit there appears to be a contradiction between the condition of the victim's coat and her scarf. He, oh, he likes that. However, the real question is, why is there a contradiction? Huh? For every contradiction, there exists an explanation. Let's look at what the explanation in this case may be, shall we? Alright. It's not like he's really giving me a choice here. You're doing pretty good for a little kitten. Mr. Armando. No matter what he says, a contradiction always comes down to a lie. It's either the victim discovered in the trunk, the witness's photo showing the defendant and the victim, or the witness's testimony that, st that stated she saw the moment of the murder. Just relax and think it over. It's pretty simple, isn't it? The false evidence. It's one of those three. I mean, the trunk photo and the bridge photo sounds right. It's more so the, the testimony, I doubt. What you said just now, I'm not sure. I like that. That wasn't me, Your Honor. It was the coffee aficionado over here that said it. Scott is not in the habit of accepting false evidence, you know. Blame it on him. Blah. Blame it on him, Your Honor. He's the one trying to slip false evidence into the court. But we won't let him. We'll expose his evidence as, a, as the flimsy scam it really is. Yeah. The false evidence in this case is the... Body in the trunk. No, witness's testimony. Oh, yeah. I press Y to present it. I present this. Speech bubble. It's a no-brainer. Obviously, it's the witness that's suspicious. During his earlier testimony, the detective pointed out a crucial fact. The criminal shoved the victim down from behind and stabbed her in the back. Yeah, that's what got me to begin with. Because you see the photo and they're facing each other head, or head to head. You can't show someone from behind when they're facing you, unless they turn around for you. Yeah, whatever. Now, is that testimony exactly what the witness claims to have seen? Yeah, that's what the witness told us. Hair flick. That testimony is filled with holes. After all, the victim's coat isn't dirty at all. Hmm, that's true. It's not just true, it's the truth. If there was truly decisive evidence in this case, I'm certain that boy Wonder over there would have called them in the first place. True. Your Honor, the defense request to cross-examine the eyewitness. The testimony presented so far is not only vague, but contradictory as well. Oh damn, we got three bangs. Well, Mr. Edgeworth. It appears, oh god, that you'll need, that we'll need to hear from your mystery witness after all. <sighs> You should raise yourself for the brutal truth. Your Honor, the prosecution has no intention of hiding the witness from the court. We are prepared to present our witness at any time. Very well. Please bring forth your witness at this time. What Mr. Edgeworth said kind of worries me. 
Prepare for the brutal truth. What does he mean by the brutal truth? Who knows? Now let's proceed with the testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, please go right ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. The prosecution summons the woman who saw the events that day with her very own eyes. This is it, Mia. The battle begins here. <laughs> ah. Witness, what is your name and occupation? What? No. Um. Huh? Everyone is so silent that I can hear their hearts going pit a patter. Hmm. Oh. When I look at you, how can I put it? You look as scrumptious as a double double and a dozen donut and a do dozen donut holes. I feel like I want to hurry up and hand down a verdict just to have a bite. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, hey, not so fast. Uh, as I said before, this witness is very sensitive and delicate. I would ask the court to exercise care when addressing her. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. You are a true gentleman. Miss Fay, you could learn a lot from this man. If he's such a gentleman, he sure doesn't act like one to me. Um, sir? Hmm? Uh, yes, my dear? It's my first time, so I'm <laughs> sure I'll make a lot of mistakes. Anyway, I just wanted to say I'm sorry for all the trouble I might cause. Oh, I don't trust her. <laughs> Not at all, it's no trouble at all. Now then, may we please have your name and occupation? My name is... Wait, what? Melissa? Huh? Melissa Foster. I'm a college student, a freshman in the literature department. Wait. If only she said where she's a student at. If she had said Ivy University, then Dali is using a fake name. But the question is, is Melissa fake or is Dahlia the fake? <laughs> oh, God, it's confusing. Maybe there's two of them. Yeah, <laughs> one's Dahlia, one's Melissa. You're on the scene when the unfortunate event occurred, correct? And you were the one who took this photo? Is that accurate? Oh, dear. How can you be so mean? Now, see here. What are you doing showing that in her face like that? Huh? But it's just a photograph. It's not like it's something dangerous. She took the bastard picture. She will have known what it looked like. So why the hell would it shock her? Oh, no. Next time, I'll be forced to penalize you. Uh-oh. I don't like the turn this has taken. Nope. It's not good. Is she staring at me? Um, and you would be... Huh? I'm, a def I'm the defense lawyer. My name is Mia Faye. I see. So you are... Uh, what? Now then, young lady, could you please give us your testimony? Yes, Your Honor. I'll do my best. Ah. Uh. We know what you're really like, bitch. You're like a demon. Uh, literally a demon. Devil. Whatever. Anything horrible like that is what she is. The witness's photograph. I was using my camera to take some pictures of wildflowers. So I aimed it at a bridge. Then I noticed there were two people standing upon the suspension bridge. Suddenly they just started fighting. That's when I hurried and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Also, one thing I've noticed, in six years, she has not aged a bit. Yeah, I know, like, people just don't age. Either that, or it's just using the same sprite. Which is most probably the case. And right after that, I call the police. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Hmm. By the way, where were you standing when the incident occurred? I believe the map would be of help here. I would assume she's on the point. Oh, there. Really? I was standing right over here. Standing in a beautiful field surrounded by tall cliffs. Ah. So you took the photo from that location, eh? I brought the camera I was using at the time, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me to. Ho ho ho! What a cute camera. Just like its owner. Oh my god. So, even in the first case, she had the same effect on everybody in the room that she's having it at this moment, except Edgeworth isn't phased. Like, at all. 
Alright then, Miss Faye, time for your cross-examination. But I warn you, make the witness cry again and you'll feel the wrath of my gavel. Mm, great. Using my camera to take pictures of wildflowers. Yeah, yeah. Two people standing up on the suspension bridge. Suddenly they just started fighting. That's when I heard and took the photo that shows the crucial moment. Uh, If they're fighting, then surely they would not be just stood as if it's about to be like a duel at sundown. Wouldn't they be right next to each other grabbing hold of one another? That ain't no crucial moment, Melissa, if that is your real name. Yeah, bitch. Witness. When you said you took a photo at the crucial moment, is this what you meant? Uh... All I can see in this photo are two people facing each other. You testified that you saw the two of them starting to fight. Normally, that's the kind of thing we would refer to as a crucial moment. Why haven't you presented a photo like that? Ooh, it's this music. Yeah! I love this song. Well, you see... The photo was present we presented was the only one there was. But if you really want wanted to capture the crucial moment, then what happens next? You must have taken a photo of it. Hmm? <laughs> Don't! Uh, um, my apologies, young lady. But Miss Faye's assertion is not without a certain amount of merit. You can finally... Oh, he can certainly downplay a situation, can't he? I'm sorry. I'm a very bad girl. I used it all up. The film, I mean. You ran out of film? This photo was the last one. What? Unfortunately, that is the truth. I personally examined all of the photographs she took that day. All the other photos are of the witness herself playing among the wildflowers. The witness herself? Then who took the photos? Well, you see... My camera has a timer feature built into it. So you took photos of yourself. Hmm, I remember taking some photos of myself once too. Please, no details. <laughs> uh, it seems that Miss Faye's assertion was not so decisive after all. W wait, just a minute. Yeah, you prick. Well, if she had no film left, she couldn't very well take more pictures, eh? Miss Foster, perhaps then you could tell us about a different sort of photo. Photos of the incident that you took with your very own eyes. Oh, what she witnessed. Mr. Edgeworth, you're quite the poet. Oh my. Very well then. Let's get back to the cross-examination. Let's hear your thoughts on the fight that you witnessed. Yes, Mr. Judge. Why, this guy is really a sucker for sweet talk. <laughs> it looks like the other kitten in the room is the one that's getting all the attention. Yeah, it's sickening. Uh. Oh, right, yeah, I was using my camera... Take some pictures of wildflowers. Then I noticed... Okay, so then she noticed that. Da, da. Standing on the suspension bridge. And they started fighting. Turned around and tried to run away, but... She only got about ten yards before she was stabbed in the back. Wait. How would that work? Was it, isn't there a hole on the bridge? I vaguely remember seeing it. Yeah, there's a, there's a MASSIVE hole. So it's not just the fact... she It's not like she would have been able to do it. It's the fact she definitely couldn't. Okay. Objection. I object, yet again. Witness, your testimony is a joke. Huh? What? But I... I just... Miss Faye, I thought I warned you not to make the witness cry. Please. One short testimony and two bad contradictions. There's no possible excuse. You say there were two contradictions? It's simple. Just take a look at the diagram of the area. According to her testimony, the two of them were in the middle of the bridge. But if they were, and the victim had turned around and tried to run, well then, sh she would have hit a dead end, or plummeted to her death. You said 10 yards, but she couldn't have ran even 5. Because Dusky Bridge is collapsed on that side. <laughs> ah. Yeah! Get hit with this logic. 
Logic Burst. That's what it is in like the show. They don't call it anything, it's not got some sort of stupid power name. But <laughs> they have like bursts of air come out of their objections and everything. It's the best. What does all this mean? It's very simple. Your Honor. This charming little witness told a charming little lie. That's all there is to it. This beautiful young lady has been lying to the court? Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth? Oh, he's doing that. Head check. Your Honor, allow me to personally apologize for the confusion. What do you mean? There's one major mistake in this diagram. Let me guess, they are in a separate spot. So, where the victim was on the diagram is where Terry is gonna be. And where Terry was is where the victim is gonna be. I, I can already see it. What did you say? What are you referring to? It's all because this diagram was made after the incident occurred. It's a very old bridge. We couldn't find any official blueprints of it. So you're saying... I'm saying that even though this bridge is currently in disrepair, it wasn't on the day of the crime. Oh. Oh. Okay, I was waiting for him to say they were actually in different positions. There's no evidence that can prove that the bridge was broken during the incident. Actually, hang on. Wait, not that one. I wanted to actually the witness photo. Ah, bugger. Never mind. I was hoping it would catch the back of the bridge and you'd be able to see it. Aw, oh, man. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's ridiculous. You can't actually tell the condition of the bridge from this photo. I apologize to the court for not being more clear when I presented the evidence. Hmm. Hmm. Great. That guy is good. What do you mean? He planned it from the beginning. He's a genius, all right. That diagram of the, of the bridge was his insurance policy. What? That coward? Huh. Well, Miss Faye, it seems you've once again made a reckless accusation. What? I'm so sorry. I should have been more careful myself. No, 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 no. It wasn't your fault at all. Now then, shall we, get, shall we go on with the trial? I'd like to establish once and for all what it was that the witness actually saw. Indeed. All right, young lady. May I ask you to please proceed with your testimony? But I... It's so hard to go on. We're all on your side, Miss Foster. There's no need to worry. Just tell us what you saw. Yes, sir. Oh my god. Running from the crime? Okay. Oh, right. She means... The defendant. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked her up in his arms. Then he carried her over to the car. I suppose that was the only way he could make sure the body stayed hidden. He couldn't just leave the body on top of the bridge. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm only supposed to talk about what I saw. Uh, what? Instead of speculate, you mean. So, hmm. Witnessing such violence must have been difficult. Yes, sir. I'm still shaken up. If he accepts this testimony as it is, we're finished. Don't say that. Oh, well. Maybe I'll stop off at my favourite cafe on the way home. They make a really great mocha latte. This trial isn't over yet. That's what I like to hear. Alright, Miss Faye, your cross-examination, if you please. The contradiction is staring you right in the face, Mia. Go on the attack. After he stabbed her in the back, he quickly picked up his arms. So make sure the body stays hidden. Okay, why? I want to press this because I'm curious. Why couldn't he have left it on the bridge? I'll just dumped it over the edge. Although we saw a body fall off the bridge into the river. So what the heck happened? Why do you say that? It's already a broken down bridge hidden away in the mountains. Doing anything more to hide the corpse would be going overboard, wouldn't it? Yes, but that mountain is famous among hikers. A surprising number of people go up there. But it's February, right? And it was raining that day, correct? There is also a small temple and a channeling do dojo there. 
You know those monks, they just love the cold. Or cold, isolated places. I think the witness is trying to say that the corpse could have been found in at any time. Besides, the witness is merely reporting what she witnessed with her own eyes. Hmm. That was the only way he could have made sure the body was could have stayed hidden. But that... I mean, I would still go with my theory. If why didn't he just dump it into the into the water? And also the fact we definitely saw in the opening of this episode, we saw the body get dipped, dipped, get thrown over the edge of the bridge into the water below. So I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I'm gonna present this. Attention! It's the only thing I could think. There are there were two ways of hiding the body. A victim not wanting his victim to be found. A victim, God, a killer not wanting his victim to be found. I can understand that. However, the idea of moving the body for that purpose is clearly odd. There was a much easier way to make sure the body wasn't found. I mean, Edrith even said earlier in the case that if they fall into the current current of Eagle River, it's highly likely that the body will never be found. Well, what is it? Take another look at the map of the area and you'll see how. There's a river right below the bridge. Earlier, Mr. Edgeworth pointed out something interesting about the river. There we go. For those who are not aware, Eagle River is well known for its powerful current. Most bodies that fall in are never recovered. In the kidnapping case five years ago, the victim's body was carried away and never found. If ten murders were to occur at that same spot above the Eagle River, you can bet your boots that every other killer would have tossed the body in the water. Yeah, to hide it in a car is oddly specific. Well, not oddly specific, it's just very weird when there was a much more convenient way. And one way that would result in not being found out. Or at least, a higher likelihood of not being found out. I'm not sure if I care for the way you put put that, Miss Faye. But I must admit that it does seem odd not to have thrown the body into the river. Ooh. Well, Mr. Edgeworth? Ah, uh, how sad. Perhaps Miss Faye would do well to try taking a, taking a dip in the river herself. After all, you claim to be such an expert in the ways of nature. What are you talking about? My point is that no matter how odd you may find the killer's method of body disposal, the fact is that this is what the killer did. None of your arguments have anything to do with what the witness saw. Hmm, quite true. I suppose. Miss Faye, it seems that your assertion is without merit after all. But what the witness claims to have seen is totally ridiculous. Surely you can't deny that the body was found in the trunk of the car. That's certainly consistent with what the witness told us, or has told us. Please witness, go on with your testimony. I'll try. All you have to do is tell us only what you saw. Otherwise, the mean lady might yell at you again. Who's he talking about? Alright, I'll do my best. Oh my god. Well, part of me. So, stabbed her, picked up. I'll pick her up into his arms. And he carried her over to the car. Killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. Wait a minute. No. If she was stood, I can't point it out, but she wouldn't be able to see that. Ha! Although the fact she was able to see both of the people on the bridge and not the hole behind them is very shocking because that point comes out pretty damn far. No, she was stood, apparently. She was stood right next to the R of Eagle River. So to the left of it, she was stood about there. The car is directly north and there's a tall cliff blocking her view. There is no way she'd have been able to see it. And also, wait, maybe the... Does the photo also show that? Yeah, it does. That's the tall cliff. You can't see over it. But that... Yeah. I mean, that doesn't really show it as well as this does. Attention! Well, Miss Foster, it looks like you've done it this time. <laughs> hmm? D done what? Made a crucial mistake. A crucial mistake? Like what, Miss Faye? The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. You're saying you saw that, right? With your very own eyes? Yeah, and? It's simple, Miss Foster. 
Take a look at the diagram. The place... Place? Maybe she took it from the other side. I don't know. Whatever. So, the place you claim to, to have taken the photo from, that day is here. Do you see what I mean? Even if you tried to see the car, this outcropping of rock is directly in the way. Oh! That's right, Miss Foster. From where you were standing, you could not have possibly seen the killer's car. So she wouldn't have actually known what happened to the body unless he dumped it in the river. I admit that the diagram shows a large outcropping of rock, but it's also outdated. However, it isn't so tall that it would stop her from seeing the car. That's right. It's not high at all. I was able to see his car just fine. Uh, the witness's photo kind of proves that wrong. I'm so sorry, but that just doesn't wash. I believe it was the witness who presented this as evidence to the cart, yes? This is the location that the photo was taken from. Your very own photo tells the whole story. You can clearly see the left side of the bridge. But the outcropping that is being referred to is really more like a cliff. Ah! Your view should have been completely cut off by this cliff. But still you claim to have been able to see the killer's car. Oh dear. No! Order! Order in the car! What is the meaning of all this ballyhoo? What the hell is that word? Ballyhoo! Your Honor, don't jump to any hasty conclusions. The fact that the escapee fled into in a stolen car was reported on the news. After the witnessing a murder, I'm sure you can appreciate that the witness was very upset. She must have heard about the stolen car and convinced herself that she saw it. But she was repeatedly warned before starting her testimony. She was told to testify only about what she saw with her very own eyes. Or with her own eyes. My bad, I'm adding words. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Mr. Judge? What is it? I think... I think I must have remembered things wrong. Oh my god, really? Hey, wait a minute, you can't just say that. But sure she can. <laughs> oh no no no! Miss Faye, no one on the face of the planet is perfect. Hmm, yes indeed. Quite true. You know what they say. To err is human, to forgive divine. I'm inclined to give the benefit of the doubt to our witness here. What? That's not fair! It's only because she's cute. Save the tears for later, kitten. Mr. Armando, don't look back until the trial is over. Now is the time to go forward. But... But that wasn't fair. Okay, kitten, you need to relax. Then you need to remember. The other kitten's testimony. The killer broke into the trunk of the stolen car and hid the body in there. So tell us, how did you know that? How did you know that he broke into the trunk? Until you can explain how you knew that, you're going to have a lot of very suspicious people on this side of the courtroom. Hmm. Well, witness? Well, I'm certain that you broke into the trunk. Because... Because there were marks left on the trunk lid. I'm certain there were scratch marks from when he broke into it. What? Let me see that photo. Yeah, there aren't any. It's true. Wait, where? Okay, yeah, they do. Bugger. These certainly look like scratch marks around the keyhole. Hmm. It's obvious that this trunk has been broken open. Well, Miss Faye, are you satisfied? The judge is on her side. I can't make any mistakes here. What she just did, not said. Is there a contradiction in there somewhere? It doesn't work. Melissa Foster. It looks like you finally betrayed yourself. What? You said you were in a field taking photos of wildflowers. But even so, you knew about the scratches. The question is when. When did you get a chance to see those scratches? I mean, she does have a point. Finally, I finally got her. We're getting pretty tired of waiting over here. Then perhaps it would be faster if Miss Faye explained herself. Your Honor, there's only one possible expla explanation. The reason the witness had seen the scratches was... She happened to be cross uh, passing by. She put cops on herself. Owner of the car. Cops. She's an accomplice. 
There's only one way that the witness had the chance to see those scratches. Yes, what is it? Naturally, when she opened the trunk and stuffed the corpse in herself. The person who really hid the body in the trunk of that car was... Melissa Foster. It was you that did it, wasn't it? That's ridiculous. I could never. It was the man in the prison garb. He he's the one that... I don't think so, Miss Foster. If Miss F Mr. Fowles had been the one that put the corpse in the trunk, he would have simply used the car key. There was no need to break it open. But he stole the car. He stole it from a young couple that had been waiting at a red light. Which means that the key would have still been in the ignition. Oh. I see. Get owned. Get owned. Thank you for telling us about the scratches, Miss Foster. Without that, we would never have uncovered the truth. It couldn't have been Mr. Fowles that put the body in the trunk. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Preposterous. To even suggest that the witness put the body in there. If that were true, then how do you explain the photo that she took? The cops could... Wait. Only have been put in the in the trunk when the incident occurred. And we already know that at the time, she was taking photographs. Now it's your chance, Mia. Finish this thing. On the contrary, I'm not so certain about that anymore, Mr. Edgeworth. She did actually tell us exactly herself. There's no need to think too deeply about it. What I'm saying is the shutter for this may not have been pushed by Miss Foster herself. Yeah, has a timer function. Serious? I don't think you can make a mistake about it. Take a look at her camera. It has a timer built into it, even a mini tripod. Hmm. Almost as if the camera was brought just to take this picture. I mean, it is weird. She said she used up the film right as she took that last picture. What are you trying to say then, Miss Faye? That when the crime occurred, Miss Foster wasn't in the field as she claimed? Well, if she really did use a camera's auto timer, then the answer is yes, she was somewhere else. Exactly, she was not in the field. Hmm. Would the defence please explain further? Listen, this is a crucial point. Where was Miss Foster when the incident occurred? In answering that question, we'll also make clear Miss Foster's true identity. Well then, please answer this question. Where was Melissa Foster when the incident on the bridge occurred? Um... I mean, when this started, we saw- he was- he held somebody hostage. I might just try and do it between them both. Yeah. That was about as close as I could get. Naturally, the witness was right here. But that's... That's where the victim, Miss Hawthorne, was standing. Order, order, order! Miss Faye, what on earth? Your Honor, if I may. After parting with the victim on the bridge, the defendant fled by car. But this would mean that there was no time to put the victim in the trunk. In other words, if someone put the body in the trunk... It could only have been before the defendant met the victim. How asinine! Of course, Miss Fall... Uh, Falls met with the victim. The only person with the opportunity to have put the victim in the trunk is the same man that killed her, Terry Falls. You still don't understand, do you, Mr. Edgeworth? By the time the witness's photo was taken, the victim was already dead. The person in the photo was not Valerie Hawthorne. What? I've never heard anything more ridiculous in my entire life. And who exactly is the victim in this photo? It's obvious, isn't it? It's your own witness. Would explain why she's not dirty. Actually, wait, no. If the victim was dead, then why is the coat not dirty? That is weird. What? It's the only possible explanation. The woman that Mr. Falls met on the bridge that day was not Valerie Hawthorne. It was you, Melissa Foster. Me? If you remember that it was raining and foggy on the mountain that day. 
Mr. False himself believed that the woman in front of him was Valerie Hawthorne. But the defendant knew Valerie Hawthorne very well. After all, she was the woman whose testimony helped get him convicted. That's motive. But since then, my client has spent five hard years in a federal uh, penitentiary. He couldn't remember exactly what she looked like anymore. You're just making this up as you go along. Where's your proof? I've got it all right here. This piece of evidence will blow this case wide open. At the time of the incident, incident Mr. False had forgotten what Valerie Hawthorne looked like. So he gave her the note. Mr. Falls had forgotten the victim's face. That's why he needed some piece of identification. Namely, this muddy scarf. <laughs> ah! It was Mr. Falls who requested that she wear the scarf to identify herself. That's already been proven by the note the victim left. In other words, as long as you were wearing a scarf like he asked, Anyone could have pretended to be Valerie Hawthorne. Well, what do you have to say to that, Melissa Foster? Oh dear. No! Oh. oh dear. What happened? Wait, what happened? Uh, uh, where's Miss Foster? She's collecting herself in the lobby. Hmm. What happened? It's obvious that Melissa Foster did it. She hid the body in the trunk and disguised herself as the victim. She set up the camera to, to snap a fake photo of them together. The only question is, why did she do it? Well, isn't that obvious? She's the true criminal. Huh. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait for Miss Foster to compose herself before we start again. Until then, this court is in, its re is in recess. The defense and the prosecution are, are instructed to wait in the lobby. Yes, Your Honor. Understood. Very well. This court is in recess. Yay! The court is now adjourned. To be continued. Yeah! Woohoo! Right, we're halfway through. Yay! Hey! <laughs> This case is actually, I would say it's probably not the shortest, but it is a fairly short one because it's, there's no investigation required. It's purely trial, 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 and more trial. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Mr. Falls, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to say thanks. You're real good. You really hooked me up. Thanks. We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime. Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. Obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill that policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Always comes out, comes down to that, doesn't it? Anyway, we're, we're still badly in need of information. Information, right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she is a, she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. That day five years ago, I dream of it every day. Okay. Wait, what? This picture, it reminds me of everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Like it could fall apart, fall apart any minute. Huh? So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Huh. Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. It's true. I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago. I kidnapped my girlfriend. What? How many girl uh, girlfriends? <laughs> How many boyfriends has she had? Dahlia Hawthorne. Your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? Yeah, the victim's last name. It's the same. Dahlia Hawthorne. Valerie's little sister. What? Are you serious? Oh my god. The girl let her go.
Shoot up, come closer. And I kill her. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Oh dear. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. Wait, at first I thought shooting someone for a kidnapping was crossing the line, but... If it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong, no protect sister. Valerie betray me. Betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping too. A make-believe kidnapping? Dahlia, my girlfriend, my love, my teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen two, one too many soap operas. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says. H hold on a minute. What you're saying five years uh, saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by, yeah, me and Dahlia, and Valerie too. Valerie was in on it. Dahlia's family's ah oh, family rich jewelry business. We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send to her dad. We ask for two million dollar diamond. Tell him to make tell him make exchange on Dusky, Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman... Is in Valerie? That woman, Valerie, she do it for real. She shoot at me for real, me and Alia. Who did she shoot? Oh! Wait, what? I was shot in the arm. Arm. The arm. Dahlia, she jump in river. Wait, how? How? Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I could never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the Roaring River, 40 feet below. Wait, so who the fuck's Melissa? Oh god. Oh, more to the point, who the fuck's Dahlia? Oh, it's all confusing. These five years, all I wonder is why, 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 why? Why did she lie? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yeah, but I forget what she looked like. So I tell her to wear scarf. I don't want to hurt her, just ask why. Why? Why did you lie? Why did you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why... That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, Zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls, where is it? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? Not really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day on the bridge. Dahlia put it in backpack. And jumped with it. Now gone with Dahlia, gone forever. Into Eagle River. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can't come back in now. Oh, you can come back in now. We're about to get ready. Oh, about ready to go. What am I even saying? Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Never found her, my sweet Dahlia. <laughs> they never found her. Swallowed by a river. Gone. Dahlia, my teen angel. Your teen angel? How old was she anyway? Just 14? 14? <laughs> I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. 
She plans her fake kidnapping and disappearing into the river with a ro with a rock worth two mil. Man, oh man, angels these days. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a devil? It's time, kitten. Looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeves now. You bet. Oh right, yeah, so the diamond's added. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Oh my god. This is ridiculous. Oh wow. This is really, really cool. <laughs> oh man. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. Witness, are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm, <laughs> you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her client off the hook. However, to try and pin the crime on an innocent student is... Why, it's just plain evil. What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figure that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Faye, do you have any evidence as of a motive? Uh, yes, of course. I think. You're still acting as tame as a kitten, kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles no matter how bad it gets. Smile on the outside while your guts are twisted in knots is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Uh, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course, Mr. Judge is ready anytime you like. I'd like, I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm? I see, you're such an honest and upstanding young lady. Looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her. Click. She lights right up. Hmm. Very well then. Let's hear th what the witness has to say. Ugh. Oh, pardon me. Right, so Melissa Foster's history. I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing an officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defend defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Hmm. Out of the country, eh? Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her, tie her to this case. <laughs> Somehow. That will be done. Her history. I press the wrong button. I was out of the country until yeah, year before last. Until I had entered college. Uh. Oh, pardon me. Cut some bloody awning. Because it's a text heavy game. God, Planescape Torment's gonna be terrible. It's just gonna be a game that puts me to sleep because that game has got so much text. It puts this game to shame. Oh god, right, a grudge? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harboured such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. My client has always maintained that he's honest of those charges. He seems rather forgetful, your client, I mean. 
Not only did he forget about, about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client? He forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Wait, no, press harder. What can we get out of her? You said he forgot what the detective looked like. Oh my god. Oi, oi, oi. What, you, what did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification. Right. Quite white. Quite white. Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Have it added. Ugh. So, Your Honor, what the witness said just now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. Sure, go ahead. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only helps to pr pro further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's no, not why I... Whatever. Enough. Witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. She's just got all the men wrapped around her finger. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. Oh! Wasn't wearing a white scarf, but there is a blue scarf. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You weren't wearing a white scarf. You were wearing a blue one. <laughs> Sneaky bitch. Winners, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, you were talking about this scarf right here, eh? I am indeed. Yeah, that's it. That's the scarf. The scarf the policewoman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you state the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Mmm. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but there's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is, I would assume it's this, because it says about wear the white scarf. That kind of clearly states wear a white scarf. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I, uh, no, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would have. <laughs> Hair flick. Hmm, I wonder about that. W what do you mean? This note shows Mr. Fall's instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Yes! Witness, you knew what this note said. There's no other possible reason for you to mistake the scarf's colour. Gonna get blown away again. Aw, oh, not quite. Well, Miss Foster? Oh! Yeah! So, order, order, order. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation. I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. 
Terry Falls is one. And the other person who wrote the note. Now the person who wrote the note. Valerie Hawthorne is another. And finally, one more person. Did you say one more person? That's right, a person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yep. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Oh god. Wait, that's so weird. Well, what the hell happened? Oh, sticky notes. What? Okay. An, an app of mine, or a, uh, a thing on Chrome just updated, I guess. That was dumb. Get out of here. Ruining my stuff. It took the... <laughs> it took the, uh, the focus of, like, away from my emulator to my Chrome window, so I couldn't even advance it. So the third person that knew what the contents of the note was, Valerie's younger sister, victim of the kidnap murder, fell from the bridge. Nobody found. Oh god, that is the one I'm supposed to present. I'm an idiot. I nearly presented this because I'm like, that's Dahlia Hawthorne, that's who we saw the first, um, the first trial. No, this one. Whew. Dahlia Hawthorne. And that person is Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time. There is her name. Right there. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? Uh, Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The, the dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls, but she wasn't. He was going to kidnap her, but she jumped into the river instead. <laughs> you said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago, when she fell off, Dus off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. <laughs> no, no, no! As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old, five years ago. If she was still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster! I believe that's the same age you are. Oh! Even you couldn't. Miss Faye, you're not saying. So Melissa Foster would be the fake name, and Dahlia Hawthorne is the real name. But I am, that's precisely what I am saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hit and run arsonist. I understand. If I can expose her true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Oh my god, the crowd! Now this now is my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth Edgeworth squirm. Hmm. Witness, just who are you anyway? I I'm Oh there we go, the crowd shut up. I didn't think it had come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... you don't mean... Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full back background checks on all of our witnesses. So they knew it was Dahlia Hawthorne all along, and they came up with the fake... name. What did he say? Looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way, but then why? If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. I knew it. So Melissa Foster was a fake name, but, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well, but, well, as you can see, 
Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at another murder scene? Really, Miss Faye, your strategy is clearly obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent on an innocent wit witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Please, let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later... Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious, her big sister. Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? God, this case is a doozy. Jesus. Okay, so I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. Miss Faye, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? W well you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Huh. I think you need a little more push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Wait, was that Armando? What? Uh, that wasn't me. It was this guy. This crazy coffee addict. Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, no, no. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Uh, the rashness of youth, how charming. It's coming from someone younger than me. <laughs> now then, let's not waste any more time, Miss Faye. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? Mm. I'm trying to think. I would have said, like... Wait, it's not a profile. What do we actually have? Not the autopsy. What does the victim's note say again? Is it because she's in there? Which would mean he knew that she was alive. Wait, he would have known. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Victim note. So falls, 4.30pm at that bridge. So it's just, yeah, it says talk to Dahlia. Hmm. The whole truth must come out. I guess that's it, but I don't know what exactly they're referring to. But yeah, that's my only idea. The story starts after Terry Falls accepted. Escaped. <clears throat> my bad. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia, tell her this time, the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal the, to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. Ah. So it was ousting a secret. A terrific story, Miss Faye, if you like fiction, that is. We live in a world of fact, though. Enlighten the court, Miss Faye. What was this secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dolly and Valerie Hawthorne, and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. Oh yeah, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to re request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things. Such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Ah! Hey! <laughs> Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it will be painful for you. You can enlighten us once more. Oh, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia. 
This will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. Oh! Yeah! Alright. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Okay. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. But we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor? As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. We've still got that info. That's that ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I like how we're having a flashback already. I'll do anything she says, anything Dahlia asks. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. As if all three were in on it. Yeah, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. Right. Shove you off the bridge. Hmm. Wait, hang on. Oh. They were stood there. Where there's a gap. So he couldn't have shoved her. He couldn't have shoved her off, it, off of it there. She fell off the side. Because if she had fallen there, she would have fallen. And she definitely would have died. Attention. Yeah, bitch. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into, Eagle, into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry, I guess I wasn't clear enough. I shouldn't have said, that's hard to believe. I should have said, that's impossible. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge now and five years ago. Yeah, there we go. That bridge hasn't change, changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you have claimed, Instead of being carried away by the river, you would have gone splat. You would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client pushed you from behind is impossible. Mmm. <laughs> Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the in the river may have been higher back then. But it's 40 feet from 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Oh <laughs> Get owned, Edgeworth. Get owned. You're right, if the events occurred just as the witnesses testified, then the defendant couldn't have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Oh, I wonder when she's going to turn into her I don't give a shit stage. You see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. Oh god, he's grasping at, grasping at straws now. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. W what do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. 
If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Oh, well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, hmm. I do remember now, when I fell off the bridge. My skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. <laughs> order, order in the car. It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no, no time for retreat, or to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of the Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that, the, that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because of your your flawed logic contradicts the cart record. Mm. Yeah, she wouldn't have been able to fall over the side. Have you seen how high those wires are? But well, not wires, the ropes. It doesn't look like there's any gap between them either. Like, not a very big one. Yeah. Your Honor, all of the answers are right here in this photo. Take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about 5 feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there, unless you picked them up and threw them. But let's remember the size and strength of the defendant. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14 year old girl and thrown her over. Yeah, but he didn't throw her, he pushed her. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. That's also the um, a good point. Mr. Falls had been shot in the right arm. And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Oh! So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. Yeah, she would have just shot him. Oh! Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Order, order. What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? What was that raw? <laughs> Don Tigre? Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Yeah, but it wasn't. You survived. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why you risked her. she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. I'm assuming the diamond. Yeah, ransom for Dahlia. Oh, she had it on her, didn't she? Oh my god, I'd forgotten about that entirely. Yeah. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. This item that Valerie brought up to the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Oh god, diamond. <laughs> ah! No. It can't be. Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars. She was going to keep it all for herself. Mm. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river. The ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Ha uh ha -huh. ha! Oh no! Oh, I hate that stance. Fucking, I absolutely hate it. It's so creepy. Oh, I don't like it. Order, order, order! Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. Do you really think a 14 year old is capable of such a, demon a demonic plan? Yes. This woman is a demon. 
Oh, I hate it. I really fucking don't like it. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. There we go. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving the phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her, cell, uh, her sister, Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do. Planning to do? She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her note. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatch your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of you, your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. Oh god, don't. No, I don't like it. Ugh. It's so creepy. Uh oh. Oh dear. Who is that laughing at a time like this? Oi! Her I don't give a shit. Stents has um, come to fruition. Forgive me, it's just hilarious. Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman, Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally. You have the evidence to back it up, don't you? The evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14 I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Hmm... Well, Miss Faye? I... don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Faye. Are you stupid or something? Wow! Total 180. How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have a dis have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behaviour does raise certain suspicions. However, I am forced to reject the assertions made by the defence. Of course you are. Damn. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of... made a fool of me and there's nothing I can do about it. Huh. Without evidence, the trial is over? Who decided that? Mr. Armando! Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. T testimony? On the day in question, Dahlia Hawthorne murdered her sister, da uh, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Fall's stolen car and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yeah, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There's only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to, the, to that demon woman's crimes? Obviously... Oh god, <laughs> Diego! No, Terry. Terry! 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 Oh god, why? <laughs> whatever. Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new a witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne. Or whether it was in fact her younger sister, Dahlia, disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is... Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what is your take on this? <laughs> Let them. Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. Do -do -do. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Is he gonna pull a phoenix and do anything to defend her? Defendant, you've heard everything that's been 
said up to this point, yes? Uh, I don't believe it, no way. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls? I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive. And you were used. For two million dollars. That's not true. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago, she promised. She promised never, ever betray each other. Terry. Dahlia. It, it's true. Ugh, God. You are alive. You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I, I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But, there is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Oh no. He is gonna pull up, Phoenix. Dahlia. He's gonna do anything to protect her. Shit. I will allow Mr. Fowles to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. Water. Please. Water. Can't talk. Need water. Huh. Oh well. I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Dark and bitterer than hell itself. <laughs> Much better. Terry feel good. <laughs> so it's the way he talks. Who Terry Falls saw. That day, 4pm I stopped the car, I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put nobody in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was... that was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Hmm. So, Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? What? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Miss Falls? Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. <laughs> way to put faith in me, Diego! Thanks! She wasn't there, pa pa pa. Actually, hang on, this doesn't work. No, like, he says she wasn't there first, but if you look at the... Essentially, the order? Whoever arrived first would stand close to the, like, hole in the bridge, right? And that's where they stood. So I would say, yeah. He's got it, he arrived last. Wait, where'd the body go then? Because we've been saying that she hit the body in the car all along, but if she arrived first... There was nobody to plant in a car unless he knew and helped. I'm not entirely sure. He did say he will do anything Dahlia says. So, I'm gonna go with it. I got it right, I guess. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge. You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Uh... Oh dear. Oh? I would love to hear your <laughs> rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly clear. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. I'm still very confused about where the hell the body was. <laughs> Blah. Uh, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got there around four o'clock. It's true. I, I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. That's when the body went into the car. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. 
We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento uh, to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under base of tree there. <gasps> oh god, it's the that it's that same fucking locket. This is a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. This little bottle on your necklace is a memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at four o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. I was about to say, wait, no, he said 15, but no, 15 to walk there, 15 to walk back. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistake in it. Oh god. Huh? Mr. Falls? Oh, Jesus! What's happened? That's enough, please. Witness? I promised her five years ago. If it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more, then we're supposed to drink bottle. No, stop the trial. Your Honor, we need a recess. I was stupid, couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No, we are so close, just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. Mr. Falls. Mr. Armando. Th thanks for the coffee. Oh no. Mr. Falls. What? Oh god. Holy shit. This took a real serious turn. My god. He killed himself. Wow. And so my first trial ended suddenly and tragically. It ended with no winners, only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. Wow. But one person... The true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne. She left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonic... It demonically sweet face. Oh, don't, don't pop up with her demon face again, please. Pretty, please. Okay, good. Unforgivable. That witch. Mr. Armando. We were so close to the truth, it was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. False killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew it. I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Oh! I mean, this, tef this definitely gives away who he is. Considering it's called Godo's Theme. I mean, it's fairly obvious when you see him. He looks the same. He wears the same shit, too. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. The fuck? Really? The only time a lawyer can cry is... when it's all over. Mr. Armando, your hand. Oh god. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time. Then you file them away and eventually forget them. Hmm. <laughs> Is that the end of that? One year later in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Oh yeah. I was going to say, like, who? Yeah, Phoenix. Jesus. Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty. 
Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. Bitch. Ah, oh, she's just like the perfect villain. But I do. It was finally all over. At least that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Huh? Oh my god, that was the end of it. Oh, very nice. So I'm really curious, How do, when do we find out what happened to Gotto to make him who he is? Probably this trial. But case, this one is a doozy. Like, I, ha I have it listed in terms of sections of what it's broken down into. There are two investigations, two trials, two investigations, three trials. It's, oh god, I don't know, I'm trying to think how long Rise from the Ashes was. That was one hell of a lengthy trial as well, it, it took eight hours. I don't think this one will be that bad, but I guess we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to be a good, I don't know. If I tried to do each section in each session, so like, do the investigations next session, then the trials, then the investigations, that's still four sessions. Which is about like four and a half hours if I if it was only an hour and a half per section, but it's probably like two to three hours per section, so there's a lot left. Oh, I love this game. I can definitely see why Trials and Tribulations is regarded as the best in the trilogy. Because it really is incredible. It's definitely got a more mature, more serious and darker story. I mean for starters, we've just finished a trial where someone killed themselves. It, obviously, it wasn't that brutal, but it's still pretty bad when you just saw his corpse just all over the witness stand. Ugh. Either way, that is going to be the end of this session. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and until next time, take care.